Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. I started the opera with the game between Wes and Magnus, and this is how it's going to end, with some spectacular performances. It is again the familiar story. I had no intention of covering the finals, and yet here I am. Normally, when I cover these games live or near live, I'm bound to keep the level of analysis relatively basic. The first final that ended in a decisive result, Wesley was ambushed. Round two, he held Magnus to a draw. And round three was one crazy game to say the least. Let's have a look at this last game before day two starts. Wes has his side of the board and kicks things off with 1e4. Magnus responded with e5, and after the usual knight f3 and knight c6, Wes introduces the Italian. It's a more attacking approach to the game than the Spanish, but let's see how far this game goes. Bishop c5, to the very usual c3, and with Magnus getting his kingside knight out, this is a point where things, to the usual, begin to change. Not d3, which we see all the time, but this move to d4. It's far more resourceful. It opens up the game significantly. At the same time, some pieces will come off. They're talking about sooner than later. When Magnus captured, Wesley launched this attack, and there are different ways you can cover. One, you can enforce a pin. Two, you can move away this knight. And three, you can do exactly what Magnus did. He counterattacked this bishop. For those who play this line of the Italian, this is the most standard line of play. If you take, take, and take, there is rook g8, and one way to do it is to castle, and the game would continue. It appears from this position, north is in trouble, but don't have any illusions. Though north is not able to castle short, He's by no means in any trouble. He's put on g7, goes absolutely nowhere. And if there is a potential check through rook e1, this bishop will move into block. However, coming back, when Magnus applied this counterattack, Wesley enforced this pin. And with Magnus centralizing this knight, this is what we saw. The pawn came off. This bishop pulled back, and with this direct attack on the knight, before anything else, Magnus gets the king to safety. The alternative move here would have been to pin the knight to the queen. What you normally expect to see here is to stop the access to g4, but Wes had other ideas. So no h3, but this approach to the game, in a way anticipating this potential pin on the knight. Two seconds later, Magnus enforced the pin, and with Wesley only now attacking this bishop, Magnus gets this bishop to pull back. This position is by no means new. It appeared in so many other games. South has this problem of a nasty bishop pinning the knight. One possible way to do this is to chase after this bishop, and yet Wesley has other ideas. It wasn't castles either. This is what he did. It's a weird one, for sure. And Wesley must have prepared this one in his preparation stage, shall I say. It's a razor sharp type of response. If you take and take, if you get the knights to come off, capture with a pawn and automatically, South has a solid central position. If you think these double pawns are trouble, they are indeed. But what side would you think is in trouble? 
With this position, South is looking to castle. And North is the side that will be in trouble. This opening on the G file is the invite Wesley will be looking at. It will be extremely hard to cover the king side. Rook G1 is coming. The other rook will pair up. And every single piece will be targeting the king when this bishop returns to d3. So coming back, what happened after this queen moved to c2? This is how Magnus plays it. It's another razor sharp attempt by the world champ. Queen b3 in just three seconds. Let's see the knight to reposition here. And yes, Wesley does castle not long, only because of this bishop on g6. When Magnus mounted the pressure on this bishop, Wesley came in with this answer. And this is where the fun starts. Knight d2 does create a situation, but Magnus bypasses. If the knight comes off, this bishop also bites the dust. And if rook e1, this bishop will return to where he was, and the game would have continued. Probably knight a4, or something like this knight, knight f3. Both are very viable options. You may want to look at attacking this bishop on the king side to keep your focus on target. Coming back, obviously no knight d2, but this is how Magnus plays it. Magnus 2 is after bishops. With this guy on d4 being supported by the knight and bishop, you can't actually afford to move this bishop out of e3. Talking all moves, this is how West responds. Guys, it's one sharp response after the other. Magnus did go for something, but what was it? He grabbed hold of this knight. Wesley captured, and with Magnus handing over the knight to the bishop. When the bishops also departed, this is Magnus in his element. He wanted to get rid of all potential attacks and does this in the span of a few seconds. F6 wanted to open up even further. Let's a counter attack in this way. And with Magnus stopping here for three entire minutes, something must have worried him. He wants this guy on E5. He finally chooses to go for something else. He wanted to avoid the potential attack on c5, so he delays by getting his bishop to reposition here. With Wesley taking, Magnus captures using the queen, and look how fast things change. From a board full of pieces, the exchanges are taking place way too fast. When Wesley got rid of this pawn, Magnus can sense things are not quite right. He can smell the smoke, but where is the fire? There is only one way to get rid of this pawn. Nevertheless, Magnus, having some time to kill, he too stopped to think things over. Two seconds short of two and a half minutes, he got rid of this guy, not with the rock, but pawn. The world champ has taken a risk, and I guess he wants to get the king to hit the corner. Then he probably wants the rook on g8. There are all sorts of ideas. But in the meantime, how does Wesley respond? He has his very strong knight h4. If king h8, pick up this knight, place him around about here, and you tell me what Magnus has. Let's put this king back, and let's put this knight back. Cause Wesley went for something else. He attacked the queen. With Magnus backing off here, Wesley got this rook going. Magnus does the same with this rook. And only now the knight hits the rim. The knight, without a shadow of a doubt, will find this very, very powerful outpost on f5. King to the corner led to this jump into f5, and Magnus has been feeling the pressure for some time. 
It was again Magnus who stopped to think things over. Nearly two minutes later, this is what he does. With this guy advancing, the reason for c5 was to get this bishop to become far more active than he was. With Magnus locking in this bishop and tying him to the pawn, he no longer worries about his position, or at least his position with the pawn on f6 and the bishop. Rook b1 by Wes. Let to b6. And via this queen repositioning, what is Wes up to? Magnus would normally take risks, but they're all calculated. Anyway, it is what he did. It was this move to e8. King h1, avoiding any discoveries, still led to this bishop response. And what this move does is to sneakily attack this pawn on e4. The normal way to cover is to either go knight g3, either rook to e1, and yet Wesley goes for something else. It was this rook lift right into f4. Now, what is wrong with bishop e5? If the rook backs off, and let's suggest this outpost, what does rook g8 do? It's playable, very playable. But let's look at how the game progressed. After rook f4, which is a daring initiative, Magnus executed something that you don't get to see often. Do we have any daring takers, or do we want to see that move? He took this pawn, and though this looks like a smashing attacking initiative, there might be something very wrong with it. What follows is straightforward. If you eliminate this rook, this knight will fall, and this is exactly how the game moved on. This bishop on d4 is super strong. And more than compensates for the exchange, additionally, with the position you see here, this pawn on d5 is up next. Wesley was trying to calculate as fast as he could to see how to remedy the situation. By the way, this rook on e4 is also attacked. So with this picture emerging, Wesley took just over a full minute. And this is what he decides. With the rooks coming together, Magnus was beginning to lick his lips. He did something very similar in his previous game. And basically, doesn't really care who the opposition is. If Wesley wants to stand the chance, I'm talking about any chance, he can't afford to lose this game. Magnus also stopped to think things over. He took one minute and 53 seconds to see if this pawn on d5 needed to come off and how to have him eliminate it. Do we walk through the what ifs? If you take with the queen, Houston, we have a problem. In with this vicious check, and if you get rid of the rook, take him with another check, and the queen also bites the dust. But even if you don't take, and let's come back to this position, and go king g7, you're by no means out of the woods just yet, or might never be. Come in with this check, push the king forward, and when you deliver this first class check, queen f5 takes, takes, and takes, no one in the world can be saved here. So coming back, Magnus was not calculating with what piece to remove this guy in d5, but whether he should engage in the first instance. Having gone for him in the end, using the rock, it's a blunder. On this channel, blunders are identified by this sound. 
which is one of many actually, but where is it? And how would Wesley capitalize? Does anyone want to improvise? Guys, don't just wait to see the moves. The best way to improve is to consider every single move as a puzzle. I know I could have analyzed many positions earlier, but I was not willing to produce another video, like the last one, which was just over the 40 minutes mark. That one was a different story. For anyone who wants to see how blunders take place, this is a link for you to look at. It should appear in just about now. It's not just Fisher blundering, but basically our best chess engines too. In the meantime, did you have enough time to look at Wesley's options? Okay, if not, let's do it. Or even if you did, let's do it. This is what he did. When Magnus chased after this rook, something that took him only seven, oh, I beg your pardon, nine seconds, not seven. I'm afraid I need to go back to what I said in my previous video. No one is immune when it comes to blunders, and Magnus is also not immune. This attack on the rook has to deserve this sound. And let's see why. In with a check, got Magnus to flush his majesty the king forward. Another check materialized, and with Magnus getting his own king to move back to the corner, we saw a resignation just one move. Can you spot it? And if so, what are we looking at? Here it is, guys, and Magnus threw in the towel. This outpost on H6 cannot be covered in any way possible. And it's all because of the rook pair. For example, if you get rid of the rook, deliver this check, and we have it made in one move. If King G8, this is how you do it. And let's hear it. I think this is a checkmate. The other way to do it is to hand over your big lady. But the end result does not change. You can finish it off with queen takes. And if you like to tease, you can still do this differently. This is another way to checkmate. And let's hear it again. Checkmate. Method number three is to get rid of this queen with the rook. And when, and when the king is forced west, isn't this another way? And let's hear it for the last time in this game. Okay, checkmate. Magnus paid the ultimate price here. He knows he did wrong and might not even care in the end. He's the world champ, is he not? He can do anything he pleases. If he loses his final though, he will regret it. Given he's extremely competitive, this game might bother him. Therefore, things went pear-shaped with this takes on e4. His position was still bad, but this takes accelerated things against him. The show continues later today when the finals get underway. So this was it from me. Your chess puzzler here, and you know the drill. Whatever you do, guys, safety always first.